Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well this week. You may remember I bought a bunch of broken motherboards. I got the first one working last week and this is the second one. Well, my one doesn't look like this, but this is what it actually looks like when it is working. It's a HP Chromebook. It's an HP 14-CA050SA Intel Celeron N3350. It's got 4 gigs of RAM and a 32 gig hard drive. Won't be playing Call of Duty on this one for sure. So I have one of these that is not coming on. It's described to me as having a motherboard fault. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the motherboard and see where we could go, you know, with regard to getting it working again. My big difficulty on this one is, as you can see right down here, it's got a USB-C adapter and I don't have one that suits this. So right off the bat, I'm going to need to inject voltage onto the board. So I'm going to take pictures of the motherboard, bring it in here so we can get a look at it and then see how we can get power onto the motherboard. This is a picture of the main motherboard on this HP 14 inch Chromebook. Now, in case anybody is curious, what I've done here is I took three close up images of different sections of this circuit board. I threw them into Photoshop and I used the photo merge function. Now, it is really, really good. The only problem I have with it at the moment is it slightly skews it. But for the amount of hours it saves me on doing it, it, it does a really incredible job for what it is. So that is what I'm working with here at the moment. And you'll see as we zoom in, it's it's pretty good quality and fairness to it. So the USB-C connection that powers this is on a second board that connects through a ribbon cable over here. I don't have that power adapter, so that's a moot point, as they would say. So what I need to do now is I need to identify where on the motherboard the 15 volts enters the circuit. And then what I can do is I can uh, inject 15 volts DC with my power supply. So the question is right here, where on the motherboard do I inject the 15 volts? Have a look over the motherboard. What are you thinking? Where, where, where should it go? Well with the other videos that I've done on this channel, which have been must have been 15 inch Dells and Toshibas, what we've seen is that when the DC voltage hits the motherboard, it first hits a fuse or an inductor, and then it goes to a pair of MOSFETs, and then to a current sense resistor, and after that, that's normally the main power rail, which goes out to all of the secondary circuits. So this is a HP Chromebook, so I'm conscious that it may be slightly different, but I'm gonna use the same principles and see if we can find out where we should be injecting our 15 volts. So I'm gonna show you first what a great job Photoshop did on stitching my three images together. If you look at it right here, so I'm going to zoom into 100%. So as I scroll around the motherboard, it's not perfect by any means, but you can see what a good job it did on the detail. Now you can see all the different components right here. It's a Nuvaton, is that the startup chip maybe? I see a wind bond, There's, that's actually a wind bond as well, so I think one of those is the BIOS chip. These look like memory chips. So as we scroll around the board, where have I got a pair of MOSFETs? Okay, well we have pairs of MOSFETs right here. So there's two here, two here, two here, and two here. Um, where else? Okay, I don't see any other pairs of MOSFETs right there. So where would you be looking? Where, where does the DC voltage come in? That is the challenge. Well, what I'm thinking right now is Although there's bigger MOSFETs there. Okay, so... Okay, there's... I'm going to work on the basis that it's possibly somewhere here. And I'm going to tell you why I'm looking here in a second. I'm just going to give you a few seconds to try and think about that yourself. And then I'm going to come back with, well, my answer. Well, the reason I'm looking at this part of the motherboard is for two reasons, and let me show you those two reasons. Okay, can you see this? I've just blurred out the rest of the motherboard. But we've two current sense resistors right here. Now, what I've seen on the other boards is that there's two spots where the current resistors are used. One is on the main input 
DC power rail and then the second place is we've seen current sense resistors on the battery charging circuit okay so just to show them in context again so it's these two right here okay and the other thing I'm looking at is if I take this current sense resistor right here and zoom in on it you can see that there's actually two lines coming away from it this is similar to the pattern that we've seen in others so you basically have the connection of one pin of an IC is connected before and the connection of a second pin is connected afterwards and the reason for doing that is we get the voltage before and the voltage afterwards it's a known resistance so we can work out the current going through it so the question is where are these two values being sent to and we, as we watch across the motherboard here we can see that they're being sent back to this chip right here so I'm going to find out what this chip is we should be able to get a, a data sheet for BD9994 or what is that there is that a 5 okay BD9994 I'm going to go and search for that because whatever this is for I suspect it may be something to do with charging of the battery but whatever this chip is about it needs to know the current going through this for some reason so let's go and search for that and I'm gonna be back in a second I've searched online and I found a data sheet for that chip so I've just introduced my red probe here as a pointer so I can point out different stuff this is the chip uh, pin number one so I've written down on us what the pins are on this it's a 40 pin chip so what I'm going to do now is just look up the data sheet and see what it's for and what those pins are connected to so this is what we're looking at here it's a Rome semiconductor 1 to 4 cell lithium ion battery manager for application processors so you can see the number there BD99954 that's the number on it so general description BD99954 is a battery management LSI for 1 to 4 cell lithium ion secondary battery and available in a 40 pin and there are the dimensions of it okay B99954 provides a dual source battery charger 2 port BC 1.2 detection and a battery monitor with several alarm outputs so let's get a look at the pinouts so if we scroll down I think I saw them. Okay, so we've a, a sample circuit of how it should be set up right here. And then we have the pinouts right here. So pin 1 is VBUS USB power supply. Uh, pin 2 is VCC DCC power supply. So that's the power s supply used to power this chip. If we scroll down, you'll see that there's pin 6 and 7 are for an input current sense resistor. Negative input and positive input. So it's measuring the current going across a current sense resistor on these two pins of that chip for whatever reason. Um, it's got an LDO 1.5 output here. And that's pin 25 so we may be able to measure that to see if the, the chip is actually working properly. Um, and we have a second current sense resistor negative input and positive input on 29 and 30. So this is measuring the current going through another current sense resistor on these two pins right here and because it says charge current sense resistor I presume that this is measuring the current that is going to the battery so one of those current sense resistors is on the line of where the charge is going to the battery we're measuring the current going across that and that uh, measurement has been sent back to this chip right here so it can work out the current going to the battery so that's what that is doing so the question is then which are the current sense resistors that it's connected to well we think we have an in on the first one anyway because this one right here is connecting back through the pins right here this is really small so the pins we said it was connected to right here and this one is the charge current sense resistor so pins 29 and 30 are connected to this current sense resistor and that's how it measures the charge current all right so it's this one here then on the other side we have pins, uh, what did it say, 6 and 7. So it's got pins 6 and 7 right here are connected to an input current sense resistor. Now we, we don't see the lines going directly to a current sense resistor here in the same way that we can just say, oh yeah, look, 
Here's pin 30, and let's say going straight across to the current sense resistor right here. Pin 6 and 7 seem to disappear into the board. See that it's, oh that's pin 5. Uh, they, they seem to be going to the two points here. However, I've measured with continuity, and they actually go back to this current sense resistor right here. So that allows me to identify that current sense resistor that I'm pointing at right now is the input current sense resistor. So given that this is the input current sense resistor right here, I think the way this circuit works is like this. I think our main voltage comes in right here, and that voltage also goes down to pin 2 of our BD99954, because that's VCC there. We know from the data sheet that that has an input operating range of 3.8 to 25 volts, so you know, 15 volts is not going to blow that chip. I think what's happening then is it goes through this MOSFET, this MOSFET here, uh, it has these capacitors here to stabilize the DC voltage, and then it goes through this current sense resistor here and out onto the rest of the board. Uh, some people are probably asking, why didn't I just do a continuity check from the voltage pin of the USB C connector on the other little daughter board and then, you know, find where that comes in? on this board but I was unsure of the pinouts on the type C connection so what I did instead was when I identified that I thought this was where our DC voltage comes onto the motherboard I then did a continuity check back to the type C connection and I found out that two of the pins on that type C connection are continuous with this part here so that makes me confident that this is where the voltage comes onto the motherboard just a quick synopsis of where we are right now before we get to the fun part of voltage injection. So where I am with this is I've no power adapter, so I needed to identify where the DC volts were getting onto this motherboard. So what I did was I had a look around the motherboard, I identified where the current sense resistors were. Uh, from that I've worked out that I think that our DC voltage is meant to come in here. Uh, once again, I don't have a power adapter, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this Tenma power supply to inject 15 volts at 3 amps onto the board. So, I power on my power supply and I put 15 volts on it. I set a current limit of 200 milliamps. I'm just doing that initially, just for the first uh, initial injection, just in case I've got something wrong with this. So that'll limit the amount of damage, hopefully, if I've, if I've got something wrong here. I don't think I have, but that's uh, safety. So with that set on my power supply, we then connect the black jumper wire to ground, and then I soldered our red jumper wire onto that part of the circuit right there. So the question is, what happens when I do this? Well, the really good news is it didn't blow up. What did actually happen was the board started pulling 60 milliamps in and around that. And I'm not sure whether that's right or wrong. But what I decided to do was just, with that power connected, check around the other components on the motherboard and see if I was seeing you know, the secondary voltage rails coming online. And then that would indicate to me that where I'm injecting is the equivalent of plugging in a proper USB-C power adapter for this motherboard. So with the power plugged in, I found that there was 15 volts on this current sense resistor right here and on this inductor. I found that there was about 8.8 .8 volts at this position here on this current sense resistor, which is probably in around what the battery charging voltage should be. But down at the BIOS chip, I got maybe what you would consider a better indication. Um, there was 1.8 volts on this pin here, which is pin 8 of the BIOS. A lot of the BIOSes on the other boards that we've seen are 3.3 are volts, but this one I'm pretty sure is 1.8, and I found that there was the correct voltage on this. And finally, on the other side of the motherboard, there is the keyboard connector, and I found 3.3 volts on a number of the pins on that. So I'm pretty confident that you know injecting the 15 volts right here is an appropriate alternative to plugging in the USB-C adapter. So what I've demonstrated in today's video is how to inject power onto the motherboard where you don't have the correct power adapter. 
and that is where I'm going to leave it for today. We've now got power onto the motherboard so we can start trying to fix whatever the fault is with it and that is going to be in the next video. Please like and subscribe and leave any comments that you have down below.